Bear with me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. We'll take. We'll proceed. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing in the parking lot of Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 1.18 a.m., and this is temporal experiment number one. Please note, the app's clock is in complete synchronization with my control watch. Now, if my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles an hour, you're going to see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! another competitor review. This week we're going to be looking at a company called Six Connects. Six Connects was founded in 2011. They're based in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, they have about 50 to 200 employees, which is a pretty big margin, but they're similarly sized to us. And they specialize in virtual events. So when we say virtual, if we take a look at their demo platform, we see here a web app that very much is a virtual event. Um, maybe not quite as extreme as we've seen some platforms do. Uh, all the images and everything in the background are static. Uh, but it does give an interesting way to navigate in what looks like and feels like kind of a virtual space. So if we just take a quick spin around, we can see that all the main items here, uh, media wall, auditorium, breakout rooms, everything is clickable. Uh, and these will lead us to the different rooms. We can also use their side navigation menu to go to those functions as well. Now, before we dig into those, just real quickly, we do have uh, the ability to edit our registration info, download our data, um, update our profile. We have access to an email inbox, which I don't know if notifications pop up. That would be handy though. And the preferences are pretty limited, um, but it is nice to just have those options for tool tips and things like that as you're clicking around in this. So let's go ahead and check out the auditorium. Take a walk with me. In the auditorium, we see a full agenda that pops up. We have the ability to access on-demand content, and then they also have scheduled content here. Um, so these would be live sessions. We can actually see a live countdown going for when these are occurring, and it looks like these probably are adjusted to my device's time zone, which is another handy feature. Uh, you can click on each one to get more or less information. And you can also go ahead, if you see on the right here, add anything you see to your agenda. You can also rate sessions afterward very quickly and easily. And as far as what the video setup looks like, uh, there's some interesting features here. So when it comes to these sessions, once you start them, you can actually see the slide presentation if it's set up. mirroring what's happening on screen. So as we progress through this, we can see the different slides going on. And we also have the ability to jump ahead to different places in the slide presentation that correspond to the deck. And I'm not sure if this is an innate capability, but it does have uh, subtitles or captions that come on for the video, um, which is a really cool thing, making it just open to everyone. It also has a tab for a Twitter feed so you can see anything going on on Twitter that has to do with any hashtags that could be dedicated specifically to this video. We can ask questions, so there's some interactivity that's na natively built in. We see our speakers. Uh, it doesn't look like we are able to like go to find any information about them beyond what's listed. And then we also have our event resources, which opens up the same slide deck we were looking at earlier. Um, so pretty handy tool overall as far as how everything's laid out and how it functions. You can do full screen if you need for any one of those windows, whether it's the speakers or the slideshow. 
Now, let's go back real quick. And in the auditorium, it looks like you can have different uh, tracks selected. Um, they don't have these built out per se, but if we click on the sales track, we see a bunch of different content. We see links to social media that are popping up. Um, so it looks very much like a feed set up here. How that links to the sales track is a little confusing. I would think they would have sessions here, but I'd imagine that would be a possibility. Or conversely, that you could have feeds that are dedicated to potentially whatever sessions are going on. So again, when we click on the general sessions, then it takes us back and we have the ability to filter by different types of sessions as well. We can also share sessions uh, on social media or via email. Then there are two other features here I wanted to chat about real quick. Their meeting room. So they have a one-on-one -on -one meeting room, but as it says here, this does go through Google Links. So if we click this, it actually opens a separate tab where we would be able to do a Google Hangout call. Um, they don't have anyone here, so I can't join with anyone, uh, but it does allow you to present and have all the Google Hangout functions. The other feature I wanted to look at real quick, close this tab, is the webinar only example that they do show. So rather than having the interactivity that we can see and demo for these live sessions, with the webinar only, it is exactly what it says, just a webinar. Uh, full screen video, so we don't see any of the other options, uh, but it does play the same. It also doesn't have the captioning, which again makes me unsure if that's built in or not. And we can go ahead and ask questions. If we do have any issues, uh, it has an innate media test, slide display test, browser test, uh, which I've seen in a couple different apps now. And again, this seems like a really handy feature just for helping those initial troubleshooting issues that we see happening a lot for users when they're engaging with the live stream at least the first time. So you'll also notice in the upper right hand corner, there is a leaderboard. The leaderboard stays with you when you're going through the app. And this lets you know exactly uh, as far as how many points you have, who's ahead. Although it doesn't have necessarily any way to link to the functions. It looks like you can't like go and find out more or take, have them take you to anywhere, but it does give you high level directions. Um, so hopefully these would have to be fairly intuitive, but also fairly short to really fit on screen and make sense. It also seems to have a prize store <laughs> where you can get a beautiful Argyle sock <laughs> if you do happen to win in this demo. <laughs> so next we're going to take a quick hop over to the exhibit hall. So the exhibit hall would function where you can see different sponsors, booths, everything listed out. Um, I'm not sure how editable this layout is, how many you could fit in here. It looks like conceivably you could maybe fit two more um, if you were using this layout, um, depending on if sides are available, things like that. I'm sure they probably have more so it's scalable. But if we go into the exhibit hall, they have a couple options that we can click on. Um, let's check out Facebook, a little company you may not have heard of. So one thing that uh, is a little annoying is when you go into this, it pops up with this automatic playlist. It's kind of a cool thing, I guess, to have a playlist there, but... But I don't see a huge point or advantage to having the Spotify playlist just happening on there. Um, it looks like you can schedule an interview or a one-on-one -on -one session. So this would be scheduling a meeting date and time. Um, similar to, uh, say, a dedicated one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, ad hoc meetings uh, module. You can go in and uh, I would assume these are, would be a video list, uh, but it does bring up that playlist again in this example. Uh, and info doesn't have anything on it, but presumably that would let you pull up the info. Now, uh, there's no way that I've found to get rid of this here, so I'm not sure about the previous and next, if those would let you just move back and forth between the different sponsors but we're going to have to go back for a second and then look at Six Connects to see a different layout that has some interesting functionality here too. So this has dedicated chats where you can go in and chat with people in the team, either uh, doing a direct chat, which I would assume would open a chat window in here, or doing a mail to anyone. Now they also have a public chat, uh, very similar to, I guess, the functionality of a feed, but it looks like it doesn't have all the abilities, so we can't hashtag things, for example, in a way that uh, is actually functional. Um, 
so it's pretty limited as far as being able to have interactions, being able to share anything. It doesn't look like you can uh, share videos. It does have an automatic translate, which does seem like a cool feature though for more global audiences. You can also click on people and see their company information and interact with them directly in a more private um, setting. Again, we can pop up videos. Uh, we can see they have a bunch of on-demand videos that you can share. You can add them to your agenda, um, just like we could with the uh, um, on-demand content or with the sessions in the auditorium. Same thing, rate them, share them, all the functions that we saw previously. You can request the one-on-one -on -one meetings. Not sure what this does. Apparently someone will be getting back to me for a meeting. Um, and they do have surveys embedded. So you can go in, this is a technical support form, but I would assume it could be any kind of survey or form that they'd have on there. And then a link to resources. Uh, these are all PDFs that you can just pop into. So that is going to wrap up the exhibitor booth and some of the functionalities in here. Um, next, let's take a look at the media wall. So the media wall is kind of an odd thing to have here. It's really just a collection of different uh, kind of like video clips. Um, we can go to an organization here, which seems like it would be listed in the exhibitor hall, but it's not. Um, but this has a bunch of things that should be clickable, but don't <laughs> or aren't. Um, we can go to the virtual field example and then these just pull up a bunch of different pages. But I would presume the function here would be that you can have all kinds of different uh, videos, um, links to websites, different resources, kind of a visual resource library that has thumbnails and descriptions. Um, so in that sense, if that's how it's designed to function and works, uh, I think it's a pretty cool feature actually. It looks like it can have a lot of different layouts and ways of presenting information. They integrate really heavily, it seems like, with a lot of social media platforms, at least to a certain extent. So we see a lot of Instagram, um, we've seen Facebook. Uh, I, there was a couple others we saw earlier, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, then we have, again, the videos that we s chatted about before, ability to make that demo request, um, and then just see, again, it looks like these are probably other layouts for actually how you could have your virtual conference space set up. So that's what it looks like we're seeing with some of these. Um, so it's kind of nice to be able to tour around what the other options are along with different websites. Then last but not least, they have a lounge where you can relax and do your networking. So they have this wall is clickable where you can join a chat. Are these individually check off? So yeah, they're s separated out, which is a little hard for how small this is, but they have a sales kickoff chat that you can engage with, video conference chat. You get the idea, chat, chat, chat. Um, they could have live webcast here. And then again, we can go into and have uh, just a general communication with whoever's representative, um, or an information desk in this. And then there's also that public group chat, um, which has the different rooms that we saw earlier. And you can just go ahead and join it that way too. So just two different ways of accessing that same feature. Um, other features here, obviously you have an attendee list where you can chat with people. Um, they can share their profile information. It looks like it just has one line. I didn't see anyone with two. Apparently this one has, you can download images. Um, interesting. And then we see the ability to uh, connect or view with uh, LinkedIn profiles. This opens to an external window so it doesn't look directly integrated in. Uh, it's just an external link. Um, advanced search, it does let you go through and uh, do a little bit more of a specialized search, which is always a nice feature for just taking a huge you know, user list, especially for virtual events where we're looking at sometimes 1,000 or even 5,000 people in it. So that's a nice way to be able to navigate and filter. Then we have just the direct chats uh, where you can add group chats. It looks like by adding people or multiple people. Um, again, we have that translate function or, and just starting a new chat. 
And then finally we have the personalized agenda. I'm not sure what jobs are. I didn't have anything that I could add in there for clicking around, but we do have the sessions and different elements that I added just so we could see what those are like. Play is on demand. Launch would be um, essentially if it's a uh, session. Now, one thing uh, also that I really liked about it, if you look at the top, we can see overall attendance and you can actually click and pull up who is attending. And then in each location that you're at, you'll notice that number changes. So you can see how many people are in a given room at, or a given space in the app at any given time, um, which is pretty handy. Now, if we go back into the exhibit hall, this number hasn't changed, um, but it would be a cool feature if it does work this way, where the exhibitors could see just generally how many people are on the page, whether or not they're actually interacting with them. That way they have some metrics and get an idea what's going on. Whether it works that way, I don't know. Um, but if it does, again, that would be cool. And then you can just do a general search for anything on the site, which functions pretty well. It'll pull up any content, but it's not going to take you directly to places. So it's just looking for keywords in any of the documents, videos, sessions, um, whether that links to people. Maybe there's not a Tommy, so we'll see. But overall, uh, this is how Six Connects functions. We've seen a couple different layouts. We've seen some of the core functionalities that can be there or are there. And that's our time today. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of their program and software. And now we have to get back to the future.